Hey everybody, welcome to The Automation Show. My name is Sean Tierney from theautomationschool.com. And today, on today's episode, we're gonna take another look at the RTA. Let me get that up here. And um, the RTA, DF1 to uh, Ethernet converter that we set up in the last show. So um, uh, what I have here is everything set up the way it was. I got a Micrologics 1000 set up at 19.2, uh, DF1 going through a, a generic PMO2. Coming down here to um, the RTA unit that we set up last time. And we gave this an address in the last show of 155, 192.168.1.155. So from there, we were able to go online. I actually have, let's see if we can switch over here to the PC. And I'm actually online just as a refresher here. Let me uh, pull up RS links and we are going through the Ethernet driver here. And we have the Micrologix right here, Micrologix 1000, 1. 55 okay and we found out last time not to use the ethernet ip because it shows up as the uh, 515 rta eni so that's where we are now and uh before we get started though i want to say hi i see some guys in the chat so a big shout out to zach to uh queer and to ziad so my apologies if i um said your name wrong but in any case Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't get the message instruction to work. So I want to, what I want to do is I want to read something from this 505 I have over here. So let's take a look and uh, at that 505. Okay, so I should still be online with the 505 right here. And what I have in the 505 is just a standard, uh, the IC500 demo. So that's what I have in there. And there's a bunch of timers. There's really nothing going on with the integers, unfortunately, in this program. But if we come down here to the timers, you can see we got this timer going, this one going, this one's going wicked fast. <laughs> got that one going. So we're going to try to read that information over Ethernet into our Micrologix 1000. And uh, let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Now, I've connected to the unit. You know, I typed in its IP address like we did last time. And I went to mapping because we're going to have to set this up in a moment. But let's let's go back to the 1000 first. And I, and I think it'll become clear why we have to set that up. So let me go ahead and go offline here. Okay. And I'm going to just trigger this using a button because um, if we take a look here, let's do, uh, let's do here. I'm just going to use one of these buttons and the reason is um, I want to be able to see the results. If we set this up to be continuously uh, resetting itself and continuously trying to read, then uh, we, there would be no time to see the done or error bit come on and off. It would keep resetting itself. So we'll just use button number three here. So let's go back to the PC and let's see what we can do here. All right. So go ahead and put an XIC and an MSG in. And I'll use input zero slash three. That's my blue button. And over here, because it's a Micrologix 1000, I have to use an N7 file. And I'm going to use N760. And that'll take up uh, seven words there. And you can't change that. All right. So with that said, if we come over here, we can see we're going to do a read because we're going to read from that slick 505. And the data table address, that was T4 colon zero. No, this is in this controller. So where am I going to put it in this controller? Let's do N770. And how many words? Oh, we're going to do 20 words. So this is all has to do with this controller, the 1000. Okay. I'm going to put the data into, I'm going to read. I'm going to put the data into N770. I'm going to do 20 elements. Okay, that's cool. Now what's my target? Well, I know it's T4 colon zero. But what's the node address, right? I get this thing set up for a DF1. It should be nodes. It shouldn't even matter, right? Because uh, DF1 point to point full duplex just goes from one PLC to another. But with the RTA and even with the ENI, the old ENI, you can map inside of the unit. You can map uh, DF1 addresses to IP addresses. So let's go do that now. That's where we'll come back here to our browser. And we will come under 
configurable mapping. And I'm going to just do number five just for the heck of it. 192.168.1.47 is my Slick 505. So let me go ahead and save that. Okay, so basically I've mapped node number five inside of the RTA, 515 RTA ENI. I've mapped that to 192.168.147, which we can see here is my Slick 505. All right. So with that said, let's go back to RS Logics, and we're going to give this a node address of five. Okay. All right. Is everything working? Let's verify. It looks good. Let's do a, well, let's do a save. Let's do a comm system comms, and let's download to it. Okay. You can hear the relays turned off. Put it back in the run mode and we'll go online. Okay, great. Let me switch to this scene here. And I actually have a, a small test program in there. So you can see the lights going. Okay. Turn that off. And so now what we'll do is I'll press this button here and let's see what happens. Let's see if we get now before we do that though, let's go to the data table. You can see N70. N770 through N780, totally all zeros, totally blank. So, as a matter of fact, we'll leave that up. And let's go ahead and press the button. Okay, I pressed it. We got a done, which makes it look like it was successful. And then look at this, 67. Well, what's my uh, 505 at? Well, it's at 78 now. Let's see if we can get these side by side here. Uh, this guy. Okay. So let's blow that up. Okay. What is this? Okay. Looks like he's at 1718. Let's hit it again. 20, 22, 23, 24, 28. Yeah. So it's working. It seems to be working great. So that was pretty easy, right? The biggest thing we had to do when we put this message in, let's go ahead and minimize this here and maximize that. The biggest thing we had to do in here in the Micrologix 1000 was when we gave that address, we had to make sure that was mapped inside of the configuration pages for the uh, 515 RTA ENI. So that's pretty easy. Now, should we keep going? What do you guys think? Let me look back at the chat. Hey, Thomas. Good to see you, sir. Um, should we keep going? Should we try to read from this Micrologix 1000 that has that timer going? Whoops. Should we try to read that into the 505? I haven't even tried that yet. We're doing this live. It, it may not work. Who knows? Um, let's go ahead and try it, right? Because that was just too simple. That was way too simple. So... Here's my 505, right? And let's say I wanted to read from, let's see, this county here, C50.acc. You can see that's just counting up and up and up. Let's see if we can read that into the 505, okay? So here we are. Okay, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Arrange window. Boom. Okay. So, yeah, let me just put the wrong in right here. Now, you know, I'm just going to go offline because there's some limitations here and what you can do online. Yeah, I don't need the save changes. Okay, good. So we'll just put the instruction here. Now, I have no, I have nothing wired into that guy. So we're just going to have to do it. Um, we're just going to have to wing it here. Uh, let's see. We'll just use a bit. Let's see what's used here. Usage, word, 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 word. Okay. All right. Looks like break sequence. All right. B370 is not used. So that's what we'll use here. So let's put an XIC in there. Oops, got to type it in right. 
Okay, then I'll be a trigger and now let's go ahead and put a message in there. Okay, now this is a 505. Yeah, we'll just hit F1 on the mess. Whoops. You know, I really, this latest version of Logix uses um, web pages for help. I don't like that. <laughs> I used to like the built in help. This is, I don't know. And now you, you, uh, Click on some of these things, right? And sometimes they'll try to open a CHM file, which is, I don't know, painful. Because I'm running Windows 10, so, uh, you know, there's no CH, uh, CHM app to open. <laughs> so, in any case, let's see here. What do we got? This is really not telling me what I wanted to know. All right, that's what I figured. So, what does it want for a control block in the 505? Does it want an N? Let's see, what's available? I haven't done a 505 message instruction in a while. Let's see if it likes that. Well, seems to like it. That's not bad. So, I'm going to read. Where am I going to stick this? That's N10. We'll make it N11. How's that? Whoops. And... We're just going to read one. We're just going to read that one. There's not much of a program in that micro 1000. So we'll just read one element. Uh, the data table address will be C5 colon zero. Actually, we'll have to do three to get the whole, to get the whole counter in. Now, I think I have to do remote. I think because this is a bridging device. Let's pull up that use case guide here. Uh, let's scroll up a little bit. Well, let's go all the way to the top here and see, see what they have here. Let's see, peer to peer. Slick to Micrologics. I'm gonna do the read setup, page 15. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Data table size, channel. We have to change ours to channel one because we're going out to ethernet. Address. Mm, yeah, something's missing there, guys. Oop, that's control logics. Let's keep going here. This is what we need. Routing information. Channel one. Huh. Interesting. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't need that. Hmm. Okay. So, we do need to change it to channel 1, though. Okay. Multi hop. Let's go ahead and close this and reopen it. Let's see here, Ethernet IP address 192.168.1.155. And we won't make it a multi-hop. Yeah, let's try it. What the heck? This is live TV, right? So <laughs> maybe it won't work. Who knows? Comms, system comms. This is, yes, this is the right program. Let's download it to the 505. Yeah, replace the project settings. Yep. Take it out of run mode, do the download. I'm not going to apply any changes. Change it back to run mode. Go online. And now let's see what happens. Error. Oh, the connection was broken. Interesting. One thing I can think of doing would be to change it. Let's go offline here. No, don't save changes. We'll need to change it to a multi hop. All right, we can try that. That's fairly easy to try. OK, 
Okay, just take a second. The 505 is quick, so that's nice. All right, let's try it again. Oh, it worked. Is that all it needed to be as a multi hop? Where did we put that? We put that in N11. Okay. Well, it looks like it was at 461. Okay. All right, the counter is at, well, it's in the single digits now, right? Let's see if we can get these both on the same screen again. Okay. And counter. All right. It's already in the 40s, getting ready to go in the 50s. Let's toggle this off. It's at 55. Done. Do I still have the data table open? I do. 56. Man, these windows come up really small, huh? So that's all there was to it. You have to set your, on the Slick 500 side, we had to set it up as multi-hop to get it to work. Okay, let me take a look at the chat, see what everybody's saying there. Um, not much going on in the chat, guys, so I appreciate you watching. Hopefully that was helpful. A little frustrating there with that multi-hop that that didn't jump right out at us, but... Um, in any case, hey, we got it working. That's all that matters, right? And um, if you guys have any questions, put it in the chat. But since I don't see any right now, I'm going to go ahead and end the show. Um, if you have ideas on what you want to see uh, in next week's show, let me know. Leave a comment or uh, contact me over at the Automation Blog or at the Automation Forums. Oh, and if you want to win one of these units, one of these uh, uh, Automation Network Data Highway to Ethernet. You can still post over at the automationforums.com. And um, let me see here. I know there's several people who have already posted, but I'll show that to you. Let me go back to, let's see, PC in front. And let's go there. All right. And let's see here, right here, data highway plus ethernet. So we already had several people uh, post in here. All you have to do is come in here and make a post saying, hey, I want to be entered in the uh, drawing to get a free uh, one of these devices and you'll be entered in the drawing. So I'm waiting till we get 25. I want to actually give it away on the show itself. Um, so um, I'd love to have everybody do that. But if I don't get enough people responding by, um, I don't know, the end of the year, let's say uh, the end of December or the first week of January, I'm just going to give it away to the people who have posted. I was trying to get, uh, you know, the more the merrier, I think, to enter the contest. But uh, in any case, uh, head over there. All you have to do is create a post saying, hey, um, you know, I want to try to win that. And uh, we'll, uh, We'll put you in the drawing and draw it out on the air. And one of the shows uh, coming up here at the towards the end of the year, beginning of the next. The other thing I probably should mention here too is um, you can see the sale I got going on here on my courses. This ends January first. I got to. Uh, I've recently invested a lot of money into new products, PanelView Pluses, uh, L73 safety, and all kinds of stuff. So. Um, the prices will be going up to cover that expense uh, January 1st. So if you're anybody looking for uh, training, I, this is a great deal on all my training courses. So with that, um, I think that's all we had for today. I want to wish everybody, I'm going to take one more look at the chat here to see if anybody's saying anything. Nope, everybody's happy. So have a great week. Happy holidays. And until next Friday, peace.